Shavua Tov from Jerusalem. Um, the past 24 hours have been probably the most interesting in my life. And for those of you who have been following my blog for a really long time, you know that um, I've had a lot of really interesting moments in my life and that it would be hard to top a lot of them. Um, and looking back on it now, it, it feels really surreal, like none of it really happened. Um, so basically what happened was, you know, I've spent the past couple of days working with a group of volunteers um, on posting, um, when code reds are going out, posting factual information that's been cross-checked across many sources, trying to keep things honest and truthful um, online. And um, so I've been really stressed out. I haven't been getting much sleep. Um, so I came home yesterday after helping out. I proceeded to buy some chocolate. Um, and some soda, um, and made my own french fries and ate a really crappy sort of midday lunch. And then Shabbat came. There was the usual music and, and Shabbat siren that I posted before. Um, and I was settled in and, and happy that I was having a rest finally from the, the madness of constant rocket attacks in, in, in the south. And, um, Yesterday there was, you know, rocket attacks on Tel Aviv um, for the first time since 1991, since the Gulf War, when I was just a kid, before Judaism was even on my radar. Um, and so I was sitting here in my apartment, and all of a sudden air raid sirens went off. Um, I panicked. I didn't know what to do. Um, I ran out of my apartment. Um to ask someone else what to do because I was completely unprepared because my philosophy has always been that, you know, Jerusalem is a place of importance to all people, Christians, Muslims, Jews, everyone, and that Hamas would never, in a million years, it would be crazy, right, for them to attack such, such a place in such a ballsy fashion. Um, so I was outside. Um, I asked a couple guys, you know, when was the last time that the sirens were heard in Jerusalem, and they said never. Turns out it was 1945. Um, and then asked where the shelter was, the bomb shelter, um, air raid shelter, and turns out it's, it's like right across the street. It's like two steps away, and so we were standing in front of it, but we couldn't get in because it was, it was padlocked. Um, so everyone ran back inside, and um, I just started crying violently and hyperventilating and I didn't know what to do and Shabbat had already started. Um, so I, I freaked out a lot. <laughs> um, and I popped my computer on and I set the, um, the news to auto update so I could watch what was happening. And indeed rockets were fired at Jerusalem. They landed about eight miles away. Um, when we were standing in front of the shelter, um, when the siren was going off, you you could hear the you could hear the two booms. Like it was it was like the air was like vibrating. It like I I can't even I don't even I don't even know how to describe it. Um. So. So I did what any normal person would do. I looked in the fridge and I discovered I had a gluten-free beer. So I cracked open a beer, had some beer, um, cried a lot, and then I fell asleep. Um, woke up about an hour later and my friend Amanda was coming to check on me. Um, so I thank her a lot for that. And um, came back inside, checked the news. Um, found out things were still going crazy. Um, more troops being called in. Um, more rockets being fired. The Iron Dome just doing its thing. Thank God for the Iron Dome. We could use a couple more of those probably. Maybe one like right next to Jerusalem. Um, and they went back to sleep. And I slept most of Shabbat. Um, I spent quite a bit of, bit of time watching the news update. Um, really, really freaked out a little bit, kind of, sort of, by, um, Hamas's promises of more surprises, um, including pushing for more suicide bombers. So, um, if there's 
any way that Jerusalem has been attacked in the past that has been incredibly effective in um, expressing terror and in the hearts of Jerusalemites, it's been through um, suicide bombings at coffee shops and pizza places and buses and all that good kind of stuff. Um, so I think that there's going to be a serious sense of, of tension and protection going on um, in Jerusalem until this whole thing is just, you know, the kibosh is put on it. Um, the interesting thing... Um, despite this being probably the most horrifying thing in my life that's ever happened to me, um, I have no desire to leave. <laughs> I was just talking to my dad on the phone, um, sort of keeping him up to date on everything and letting him know what's going on. And, you know, it's just, it's weird how I, I, I mean, I'm sure there are plenty of people here who are ready to just pack up and, you know, move on to greener, less scary, um, pastures and, you know, I am a firm believer that everything is from Hashem, and if this is if this is the way um, things are supposed to go, then this is the way things are supposed to go. And Baruch Hashem, thank God that I'm here in Jerusalem because, you know, God forbid if this is this is the end of it all, it's the place to be, right? Um, so I'm probably going to be posting a lot of video blogs just because I'm in a, I'm in a high tense position right now because of the the volunteer work I'm doing. Um. And just because, you know, I've been here, it's been a month now, and, and this has happened, and it's the first time this has happened, air raid sirens have been sort of a perhaps expected thing since the 1940s, um, when this was a very, very different place. Um, so, with that said, I'm alive, I'm safe, I'm starving, because the thing that I made for lunch, since I kind of slept a lot, it burnt in the crock pots, like, I ate hummus and crackers so gotta go get a nash go to a meeting um and keep on living life i would not have it any other way so stay tuned for more updates sorry this is really long i never make videos this long but you know this was just like this is like a once in a lifetime thing i hope i hope it doesn't have to happen again but you know what the ball is in is in hamas's court i mean they they turned gaza into a glorified military base and they're abusing their own people they're abusing israelis they're abusing the world they're abusing everyone um and they have no respect for human life or other religions or anything i mean i think that the fact that they they shot at jerusalem where there are people from around the world study here people from around the world live here there are important people here there are average people here there are muslims jews christians there are people from the Philippines, there are people from Ethiopia, there are people from all over the world. I mean, Jerusalem is sort of this this multicultural enclave, and this just shows how, how very little Hamas respects human rights, human life, any kind of life, period. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, Israel has to do what it needs to do to eradicate Hamas, and I support that fully, because I support human rights. And they don't. And that conflicts with me. So if Israel has to, you know, go in and do their thing to uh, protect human rights, then darn skippy, I stand by them. So anyway, this is getting really long. Um, I will keep you all updated with more video blog posts in the future. I'm safe. I'm Shavuot Tov, and I'll talk to you soon.